Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles, and specifically back to the World Puzzle Federation series from 2015, Round 5. This is Classic Sudoku 2, and this was a 25-point puzzle. So again, that would mean that the fastest solvers in the world would be trying to do this in about two and a half minutes. To be on the board, people would be trying to solve this in about five minutes or under. Um, I'm going to be aiming to do this at 9 or 10 to 15. <laughs> Um, we'll see how we go. Um, so this is just a classic Sudoku. So um, normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, we need to place the digits one to nine without any repeats. Uh, and as we can see, this has C2 in the grid. So it looks like the theme is still following through. A um, couple of things. Um, if the entire pack is worth 600 points, and this is a 25 point puzzle. So you can figure that out for yourself. Links below both this puzzle and to the entire World Puzzle Federation archive and on that archive you can also see who um, competed in the round and where they placed so um, an interesting piece of information there if you want to check that out I would not have placed um, first of all I was not really in the hobby back then but also uh, I just don't like speed solving. I've said that many times before. Um, the other thing someone pointed out to me was that they often watch my videos on one and a half or two times speed so I am world champion speed solver yay <laughs> I'm not I'm really not Okay, uh, I think I've gone through the rules. Let's restart the puzzle to restart my timer. Let's give this a shot. So um, I can see that sevens are pointing down. So no, seven is just placeable in box eight because I've got four sevens looking into box eight, which is always going to restrict it to a single cell. I am going to pencil mark the seven, eight, nine up here because um, uh, this can't be a seven, which means seven is in one of those two. Nine can't be here. I, because it, if if I ever do enough restrictions, that will give me the information I need. I've also got a triple here, which is three, four, five. So this is just a five. This is the only place five can go. And this becomes a three, four pair. And the four makes this the three and this the four. That I, I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Okay. Six and six put six here because sixes are looking down and sixes is looking across. One is now in one of those two. Two, I'm not sure about. I need to put three in this row. Well, this is a triple, and I quite like doing triples. Two, three, four. And that may be slowing me down, but I quite like triples. So two, three, four, because five, six, seven, eight, nine. But four can't be here, and four can't be here. So I can take four out of those and put the four into there. And these become two, three. I need to put eight and nine into those. Mm, don't know. But I haven't even looked really for pointing digits yet. I've been getting distracted. Like six is in one of those two. Five can't be in any of those. This five eliminates those. That five eliminates those. So five is in one of those two, which means that is a five. Cool. So this is now a triple. Three, eight, nine. Okay. In here, I've got to put one, seven, eight, and nine. So this is just an eight or a nine. There's no seven down here. So seven in this column is in one of those two, and that seven is eliminating that one and putting it in here. Adding the extra pencil marks and then eliminating them is definitely slowing down my time rather than writing in the digit. But I want people to be able to follow along with the video. If I'm just like going, that's a seven, that's a three, and jumping around the grid and putting them in, it often causes people, and I've had this feedback from a lot of viewers, it often causes them to go, how did he do that? And have to stop the video and then go back and figure it out and everything. And I don't want that. I want people to be able to, to follow along cleanly. Now, where is one in this column? One can't go here or here. So this is the one in the column. So this becomes eight, nine. But I can also see three can't be in any of those. Oh, this is going to be a trend on these puzzles because of the C, isn't it? Three can't be in those. So three is in one of those two. Seven can't be in here. So seven is in one of those two. Can I do that in any other way? Yeah, one is in one of those. Ooh, I'm not sure. These are two, eight, and nine, another triple.
Hmm, not sure. Four is now here by Sudoku. So these are five, eight, and nine, and five is in one of those two, but the five is saying not there. So that's the five. This is now an eight, nine pair. So that makes this quadruple one, two, three, four. So four is in one of those two because I can't put four in any of those or any of those. Four is here. This four is looking up saying not there. So that's the four. These now become one, two, three, but there's a two and a three already in column eight. So that's the one. This becomes a two, three pair. Great. Excellent. Happy. Haven't solved it yet, but I'm getting closer. Right? Right? Okay. So the triple in this column, I've got one, two, three, four, five is six, seven, and eight. So this is from six, seven, and eight. This is, oh, but there's no six up here. We're six in this column. So this is the six in the column, but these have to be from seven, eight. But I can't put seven here because seven in this row needs to be in one of those two. So that's the eight, that's the seven, making this can't be seven or eight. That's the nine, which looks back making that the eight. And I get a bunch of digits from a single column deduction. I like it. That means nine is not in any of those two. Placing nine here, this is a three, eight pair meaning eight is in one of those two by Sudoku and three is right there by Sudoku. Cool. This is now just the two that has not been placed in the box. This now has to be a triple, but I'll do the pair first. One, two, three, this is four and eight. Once I'd figured out one of them was four, I could use my pencil marks to get the other one. The four says that's the eight and that's the four. This is the value of pencil marking this way when doing classics. And we try and do similar when we're solving variants, but we'll often use pencil marks in different ways. So these are one, five, and seven, and there's no five here. And now that it's down to a triple, I don't mind removing the corner marks for a little less visual clutter. Um, although sometimes they still help. So I can see I've got a two, three pair in the column. So this is a quadruple that doesn't include two and three, but I'm going to look here first. These are one, six, and nine, and there's a one and a nine in the column. So that becomes the six, and I can take the six out of everywhere. Um, the one, nine, not seeing how to resolve. So let's look at this column first, because I've got two, three, an eight to place. So eight has to go in one of those two and it's not there. So this is the eight and this has to be two or three and that's going to get a lot because the three makes that the two, which looks up making that the three, across to the two, down to the three, around to the two, taking two out of there, making this an eight, nine pair. So that becomes the two. And this three looks across making that the eight and that the three. The eight looks back making that the nine and that the eight. The nine looks up making that the eight and that the nine. And that did a whole bunch of work um, from following the twos and threes. Good stuff. This is now a triple. One, two, I've got three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So it's one, two, nine. There's already a nine in this row. There's already a two in both of those rows. So that's actually a two, and this is a one, nine. Now in this, I've got three, seven, and eight. I've already got a seven in this row. I've already got a three. Oh, there's eight already in both of those. So this has to be a seven, which means this can't be an eight. So it's a three, and that's the eight. That does all that work. The seven looks across taking seven out of there. So this is a one, five pair, and this becomes the seven. This is doing a lot of work. So in this row now, I need to put a three in one of those two digits to put a three in the row at all, or those two cells to put it in the row at all, and that three is saying not there. So this is a three, which means to complete the row, I need a one and a five. And the five is looking at making that a one, which makes that five and that one. And now I can go in either direction. That one can look up making that nine and that one, or that one could have looked across saying making that nine and that one. Eventually, you want to do both. I now just need to complete this box. I need to put a four in the box. It's not there or there. So that's the four. I need to put a five in the box. It's not there or there. So that's the five. At this point, I like pencil marking the digits that aren't there because as soon as I eliminate one of them, I can put in the other. And that is the solution to the puzzle. Eight minutes and two seconds. Now, this was a puzzle that, as I said, um, at 10 points a minute, World's fastest would be doing in about two and a half, and people who are trying to speed solve would be aiming to do in about five. I took eight. I'm really happy with that. Maybe I've got my timings wrong. I don't care. I really don't care. Um, 
all that matters is that you guys are getting guys all of you guys and girls and others um all all are welcome here um uh enjoying the puzzles that i'm presenting um i think these are good examples of classics as we get to the harder classics i really do start enjoying them a lot less but i will continue to present them because i think the series is worth presenting um even if i need to get help with some of the harder ones we'll see how we go thanks everyone for watching i hope you're enjoying it all and as always good luck with your solving